Hi, welcome back to my channel Quick Recapped. Today, I am going to explain Prometheus movie. That is a science fiction film. Watch out and take care. A creature that looks like a human, but is not from Earth, is standing close to a very big waterfall. It watches a spacecraft fly away from the planet before picking up a container with dark liquid inside and drinking from it. As soon as the creature drinks the dark liquid, it starts to change. Its skin turns black, and the liquid dissolves its genetic material because of this. The creature collapses and falls into the water. The creature's body starts to break apart and dissolve, and as it does, its genetic material DNA is carried away by current. In the year 2089, a group of people who study ancient things, led by two doctors named Elizabeth and Charlie, discover some drawings on the walls of a cave in Scotland that are at least 35,000 years old. They realize that these drawings are similar to other drawings they have found in different parts of the world, made by cultures that could not share informations to each other. Two years later, a spaceship named Prometheus leaves Earth. Everyone on board is under cryosleep, and a robot named David is responsible for looking after everything. The robot named David, in his free time, he learn more about what it's like to be human. He does things like playing sports, watching movies, changing the color of his hair, and learning old languages. He also likes to look at the dreams of the people who are sleeping on the spaceship. For example, Elizabeth saw a dream where she remembers when she was a child and watched a group of people in Africa bury a man. Her father had to explain to her that different cultures have different beliefs about what happens when someone dies. After two years of traveling, the spaceship finally arrives at its destination, and David wakes up everyone who is on board, including soldiers and scientists. After the spaceship arrives, everyone gets a chance to rest and eat some food. The captain of the spaceship, Captain Yannick, even puts up a Christmas tree because they missed the holiday season while traveling. However, a person named Meredith, who is responsible for making sure everyone is doing their jobs correctly, thinks this is silly. Soon after, they start to get ready for the mission. Meredith shows a video message from Peter, who is the CEO of the company that paid for the expedition. Peter explains that by the time they watch he is already dead and that David, the robot, is the closest thing he has to a son he'll never have. Peter has always been curious about where humans come from and what happens after we die, which is why he funded for the expedition. Elizabeth and Charlie brought him a theory that they wanted to investigate. The doctors Elizabeth and Charlie take the lead and explain that they found ancient paintings all over the world. That show a map leading to a planet with its own sun that can support life and that's where they are now. The doctors believe that this map was created by aliens Elizabeth call engineers, because they think that they are who created humans. However, the rest of the crew is not convinced. Shortly after, Meredith, who is in charge of overseeing the mission, calls the doctors to her private quarters where she has her own medical equipment and life support system. Meredith tells the doctors that she doesn't believe the cave paintings mean anything, but she is only doing this because it was important to Peter. She is responsible for ensuring that the expedition is not a waste of money. However, Meredith forbids the doctors from making contact with any potential life if they find, which confuses the doctors as to why they even came here then. David spent the last two years studying many ancient languages and believes he can communicate with the engineers. He tries to send a message to the planet, but there is no response. The crew decides to land on the planet, and as they approach, they detect no signs of civilization. However, Charlie notices some straight lines on the ground that seem unnatural, so they land there. David wears a suit even though he doesn't need it but he wear because he was designed to look like a human. The group travels in vehicles to reach a dome-shaped structure that even geologist Fifield can't tell it's natural or not but it confirms that it's hollow. They go inside, and Fifield sends two probes to map the area. The group goes inside a dome-like structure which might be hollow. They use probes to map the area and find a water source that is heated by sunlight and has acceptable CO2 levels. It's toxic outside, but inside here the air is okay to breathe. Charlie thinks the aliens were making the planet habitable and decides to take off his helmet to check if the air is safe. After that, everyone takes off their helmets and continues to explore. David finds a wall with symbols and goo and activates it to his knowledge language. Suddenly, a hologram of moving figures appears in the hallways. 
The crew follows the figures and discovers the dead body of an alien lying next to a door that appears to have killed it. Fifield and Milburn decide to leave because they think things are becoming too dangerous. The doctors stay to examine the alien's body. David opens a door and they find the alien's head in excellent condition. The crew discovers more dead bodies, indicating that the alien species is extinct. They also find worms in the room, indicating the possibility of life. Additionally, they see a large statue of a humanoid head, murals on the ceiling, and stone cylinders. David sees that the stone cylinders are sweating, and one of them starts to release a black liquid. Elizabeth is too distracted by the changing murals to notice. She believes that they have changed the atmosphere in the room and they must go. So, she and Charlie put the objects in a bag to remove them, while David takes one of the containers. He realizes that the cave is like a grave. However, Yannick discovers an incoming dangerous storm and warns the crew. Meredith gives them only 15 minutes to return before closing the ramp. The team quickly exits the cave and drives back to their ship as fast as they can. During the journey, the head of the alien falls off the vehicle. Elizabeth goes back to get it, but this causes the storm to hit her and enter the ship. Charlie tries to rescue her but also gets stuck, and they both have to be pulled away by David with a set of wires. The crew then begins to decontaminate themselves and the ship, but realizes that two crew members, Milburn and Fifield, are missing. The two scientists get lost inside the cave and Yannick communicates with them and says that they can't rescue them due to the storm. They will have to wait until morning. At the same time, the team cleans the head and checks it quickly. They find out that it is not an exoskeleton but a protective headgear. Inside the helmet, they find a humanoid alien head that seems to be changing. They try to make it alive by running a stem line into its brain to stimulate it. After running a stem line into the alien's brain, the head starts to gesture. But things go wrong quickly and due to overstimulation, it explodes. Elizabeth examines a sample from the head and finds out that its DNA matches human DNA, which confirms her theory that these aliens created the human race. David updates a cryosleep pod with a mysterious person and only Meredith is aware of the message, and she becomes aggressive, demanding that David tells her what the person said. David reveals that they were simply told to try harder. David investigates the cylinder he brought back and discovers capsules with black liquid inside. He then meets with Charlie and they discuss how far they would go to find answers. Later, Charlie joins Elizabeth in her room and she shares the news about the DNA, and they celebrate by being intimate. Milburn and Fifield are in the cave and they see a pile of alien bodies. Then, Yannick contacts them and says that the scanner found signs of life nearby. Milburn and Fifield get scared but the signal suddenly disappears, and Yannick says it was just a glitch. Finally, Milburn and Fifield find the room with the monolith and see black liquid flowing from the cylinders. They find a reptile-like alien swimming in the liquid. Milburn approaches the creature and it attaches itself to his arm, trying to break it. Fifield cuts the creature off Milburn's arm, but the creature sprays its corrosive fluid on Fifield's helmet, melting through the plastic and reaching his face. Fifield is suffering in pain and the creature has entered Milburn's suit, leading to his death. The next morning, Charlie wakes up feeling sick and notices something strange in his eyes. Yannick informs everyone that the storm has passed, but they haven't been able to reach the scientists. The scan is still showing a glitch, so David promises to find and fix it. While the rest of the group is searching the cave for the lost scientists, David secretly decides to explore on his own. He records what he sees and sends it to Meredith. He finds another room filled with thousands of cylinders and alien armor. Then, he enters a chamber with several cryosleep capsules. David cuts Meredith off before activating a machine in the center of the room that shows him holograms of the engineers, looking at a star map that includes Earth. Upon the conclusion of the holographic display, David becomes aware of a cryosleep capsule emitting a glow indicating the presence of a live engineer within it. During their search, Elizabeth looks that Charlie seems to be feeling sick and keeps tripping, but he insists on continuing the search. As soon as they locate Milburn's corpse and approach it for closer examination, the small reptilian creature suddenly springs out and scurries off. 
However, despite their search efforts, Fifield remains absent. At that time, Charlie begins to really feel worse, so Elizabeth orders everyone to return to the ship. However, when they reach the ship, Charlie's skin turns black, and Meredith arrives at the hangar holding a flamethrower as she is determined to prevent Charlie from boarding. Yannick and Elizabeth get into a disagreement with Meredith, but Charlie, feeling hopeless and thinks that he has no future, deliberately walks towards Meredith and urges her to burn him with the flamethrower. Elizabeth is left tormented as she watches this unfold. The crew is isolated, and David examines Elizabeth to make sure she wasn't infected by Charlie. However, the test shows that she is pregnant, which confuses everyone because she was in cryosleep three months ago. The fetus has an unusual shape, and Elizabeth wants it out, but David says they don't have the necessary resources to do so. Suddenly, Elizabeth experiences excruciating pain in her abdomen, so David gives her medication to put her to sleep. A few minutes later, some members of the crew wake Elizabeth up and tell her to go to a cryosleep capsule, until they decide what to do about her unusual fetus. Elizabeth declines to keep the thing they discovered and resists the others before fleeing until she locates Meredith's medical pod. She asks for a caesarean, but the pod is not configured for that because that's only for men so can't do it. Instead, she asks for the removal of the foreign object. Elizabeth undergoes a medical procedure to remove the strange fetus from her body, but the anesthetics given to her are not strong enough to stop her from feeling extreme pain. As soon as the creature is removed, it bursts open and an alien creature emerges from it, thrashing about in an attempt to break free. After Elizabeth gives birth to a creepy alien, she leaves the machine and locks the creature inside to be sedated. Meanwhile, Yannick notices something strange outside the ship, and a crew member checks and finds a mutated Fifield. Fifield begins attacking the people in the hangar. The men fight with Fifield, but bullets don't hurt him. So they use a flamethrower to kill him. Elizabeth goes to the infirmary to get medicine and discovers that Peter is still alive. She is surprised to learn that he was the person in the extra cryosleep capsule that David had been speaking to earlier, and the medical pod was intended for him. Peter wants to speak with the engineer who created them and asks David to take him there. Elizabeth warns them that the planet is dangerous, but they ignore her. Elizabeth decides to go back into the cave despite her pain and puts on her protective gear. Yannick tells Elizabeth that the planet cannot be the engineer's home planet and the cave is possibly a military base where they were creating the black liquid as a weapon of mass destruction that leaked and killed them. Yannick wants to leave and go back to Earth, but Elizabeth wants to find the remaining living engineer and urges Yannick to wait. Peter is also preparing to depart, and Meredith attempts to dissuade him from venturing into danger by addressing him as father. However, Peter disregards her as usual. When they reach the cave, David tells everyone to take off their helmets, because he knows that there is no any disease in the air. The crew enters a new room with many cylinders and David calls it a cargo hold. Yannick and Meredith realize that they are not in a cave, but on a starship. David activates a machine and explains that the engineers lost control of the black liquid that killed them, while they were processed on their way to Earth. The final engineer is woken up, and Elizabeth attempts to ask him some questions. However, Peter, the leader of a group of soldiers, interrupts her and has one of his soldiers hit her. Peter then begins to ask the engineer some philosophical questions. David translates for the engineer, but the engineer reacts by using David's head to kill Peter. Next, he pushes Elizabeth aside to fight and eliminate the mercenaries who are shooting at him with their guns. Back on the spaceship, Meredith observes Peter's death from David's point of view and instructs Yannick to prepare to depart the planet. Elizabeth escapes while the engineer starts up its own spacecraft to travel to Earth. Many openings appear on the ground, and Elizabeth jumps through them while calling Yannick. She warns him to prevent the engineer from reaching Earth, or else the dangerous black liquid will arrive and annihilate humanity. Meredith believes that the spaceship Prometheus is not equipped for combat and suggests that they leave without taking any action. However, Yannick disregards her opinion and directs the pilots to activate the ion propulsion system, which will turn the spaceship into a fast-moving projectile. Meredith exits the ship, and Yannick grants his pilots permission to do the same. 
However, the pilots have great admiration for their captain and choose to stay with him until the end. The ship collide with the engineer's ship, successfully preventing it from leaving the planet. After the ships crashed, Elizabeth and Meredith had to run to avoid getting crushed. Unfortunately, Meredith didn't make it and died. Elizabeth found a safe spot behind a rock and survived. Later, Elizabeth entered Prometheus to get some supplies and heard some noises coming from inside. She grabbed an axe for protection and went to investigate. She found out that her alien offspring had grown and escaped from the medical pod, becoming huge. At that time, David tells Elizabeth to run, but it's too late. The engineer attacks her and pushes her against the wall. However, Elizabeth thinks quickly and opens a door behind her, which releases the alien offspring that quickly jumps on the engineer. Elizabeth runs away from the scene after her alien offspring subdues the engineer. Outside the ship, she is contacted by David, who tells her that there are more ships of engineer at underground that he can pilot. Elizabeth decides to rescue both David's head and body. However, she makes a request to go to the engineer's home planet instead of returning to Earth, and David agrees to her request, despite not understanding her motives. Elizabeth goes back to Prometheus to send a message to Earth explaining what has happened before she and David leave the planet, on an alien ship. Moments later, a black alien comes out from inside the dead engineer, which confirms that this story happened before Ripley's story. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed video.